Welcome, Grade 11s. In this lesson, we will revise the different types of graphs we can use to represent data and how each type of bar graph offers a different overall picture of the data. Let's start with the different bar graphs. These graphs compare discrete data using either vertical or horizontal bars. The bars have spaces between them. This is a single vertical bar graph. Can you see that all the bars have an equal width? The spaces between the bars also have the same width. The graph has a title at the top and each axis is labeled. This is an example of a single horizontal bar graph. The title is still at the top and the axis are labeled, just like the vertical bar graph. Occasionally, we need to represent and compare more than one set of data on the graph. In these cases, we use multiple and compound bar graphs. A multiple bar graph is a bar graph that displays two or more sets of data at once for easy comparison. Bars that represent the same interval are grouped together with a space between the intervals. This multiple bar graph shows a comparison of boys' and girls' heights. The blue bars represent the boys' heights and the red represents the girls' heights. A compound bar graph is also known as a vertical or stack bar graph. It is a bar graph that shows two or more sets of data where the bars are stacked up one upon another. This graph shows the total production of grains in various years. We can see that there were three types of grains that were produced and we can see the total amounts produced. There are still spaces between the intervals. Did you notice that some of these bar graphs require a key or legend? Make sure you include all these details when you draw a bar graph. Bar graphs are often confused with histograms. Let's look at the differences between the two. A histogram is used to display continuous data, which is data that can contain decimals. To show this, we put the bars next to each other. Bar graphs can display discrete and categorical data, which are whole numbers. Because of this, the bars are placed apart from each other. Now let's look at pie charts. A pie chart is a circular graph that is divided into different sections or sectors. Each of these sectors represents the size of the data in relation to the whole. This pie chart shows people's favorite types of movies. Each sector has a label, a number, and a percentage. The number is the amount of people who like that type of movie. This pie chart shows the preferred flavors of chips. Each sector has a label inside the actual sector. Instead of showing a number or a percentage, the number of degrees per sector is shown. Remember that there are 360 degrees in a revolution. The degrees of the sectors must add up to 360. If the sectors are not labeled, the pie chart will need a key or a legend to show which sectors represent which data. Our next type of graph is the line graph. This graph shows the increase in the temperature of water over time. Once again, we have a title and the axis are labeled. The points on the line indicate where the temperature of the water was measured. The line is drawn to connect the dots and provide an estimate of the temperature. This broken line graph shows the change in temperature in Cape Town over a period of a week. We can see that Thursday was the coldest day of the week. The last graph we'll look at is the scatter plot graph. This is a comparison of children's ages versus their weight. Like the other graphs, it has a title and the axis are labeled, but there are no bars or lines. Instead, a scatter plot diagram uses points. We are not able to join the points with a line because the points represent separate people. If the graph was showing one child's increase in weight as he got older, then we would join the points. We usually choose to draw a scatter plot when there is too much data in the sets, and drawing a bar graph or pie chart is not possible. 
Once the points are plotted, we will see a general trend in the data and be able to analyze the relationship. This relationship is called a correlation. This scatter plot shows a comparison of the ages of the husband and wife in heterosexual married couples. Can you see the trend in the data? As the husband's ages increase, so do the wives. This is a good example of a positive correlation. This diagram shows a negative correlation between the number of hours spent watching TV and test scores. This means that as a child watched more TV, their scores decreased. Can you see how the points show a trend of going down? Did you notice this point down here? This point does not fit the trend in the rest of the data, and as a result, it is an outlier. Remember that an outlier is a value that is much larger or smaller than the other values in the data set. When we cannot see a trend in the points, we say that there is no correlation. Please remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Working with Data Handling Tasks video. Remember, practice makes perfect. Keep up the good work. You'll also be able to learn more about data handling on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.